I loved the idea that something artificial is used to tell the truth. It's this device of artificiality that really obsesses me. And animation is such an artificial thing. And I think animation works well for me when you're aware of the technique. In stop motion, we have 25 frames in a second. We can't do the subtleties, the, the quirkiness, but we can give a good impression of movement. Nick Park always um, proudly puts his fingerprint in his clay figures to say they're not real, they are a lump of plasticine. If we take that away and make them so realistic, we lose something. Here we are, we're in the last stages of rehearsing a play. So it's full of activity all around us. Um, we open in a few days. It's uh, probably my 30th production I've done in this building. Um, but I've been telling stories for 40 years now. It's always been about telling stories, whether it's on film, animation, or theater. And I've sort of come to the conclusion Art is about artifice. Um, <laughs> there's a clue in the word there. Even the most basic story is constructed and plays with narrative. But the first thing, having got the story, is how am I going to tell it? When I made the film Next, which is the complete works of Shakespeare in five minutes, I had rather lofty ambitions for spectacle of Egyptian pyramids, castles, all these sort of things, but the budget only allowed me one decent puppet. And I had to rethink it. And I thought, well, that's okay. I don't have much money, so I'll really enjoy the artifice. And it became a film about the puppet telling the stories of Shakespeare. The economics of animation and theater usually lead to a very stylistic production because we're in a box, basically, and we have to convey several locations. There's a separate beach there, and um, the jetty is used as a separate area. In the play, there are lots of scenes where people, where two scenes are happening at the same time. And it's a very artificial set, really, because there's meant to be a wall there and the wall in the bedroom. Um, but sometimes somebody's a, a sat there talking about the boy asleep in the bedroom, the set works. It took a month to work it out, but it's all about finding the language to tell the story. You should practice more. Four hours a day. I will. The doctor is violin, not mine. He learned. Not bad. Go on. No, no, not like that. Like this. I've been waffling on about artifice and storytelling, and I think every storyteller has to find the device that allows him to tell the story. And it is something artificial. If we go back to Hamlet, he has a skull. It's just an object, but it's a device that allows Hamlet to talk about very deep issues. My role as a puppeteer, as a director of ac actors, as a storyteller, is to tell the audience what these characters are thinking. So the whole process of coming to a theater is artificial. It's a contract. You agree to be here at 7.30. You know the lights are going to go down, and then some people who are clearly not the real characters, they're going to perform. You know it's going to be artificial. You're reading a program that says such and such a person is playing that sort of person, and it's set 70 years ago. So you come here knowing that the music playing, people will say something and then they will go off stage and there'll be scenes. It's very, you know, it's fake. <laughs> um, animation is fake. Opera is fake. Ballet is fake. Radio is fake, um, but we like the trick. This has got six characters in, but I, I have done big musicals with cast of 30, 40, 
Um, likewise in animation, I've gone from the single puppet of Shakespeare to the 36 puppets in Rigoletto. Rigoletto was a big film for me. I still had to shoot 10 seconds a day. That's dictated by budgets. And you have to structure a film like that, that um, close-ups are easier to shoot because you've just got one head. Um, they're not moving as much because you have to contain it in the shot. And that's quicker to shoot than a wide shot with 36 puppets. So the economics of making a film, you have to find a balance of telling the story in close-up and telling the story in wide shot. I don't particularly like close-ups of puppets. Um, I prefer to tell the story through body language, like seeing an actor on stage, you will see the whole figure the whole time. You can't, in theatre, cut to a close-up like you can in film. You can tell the audience that is more important than there by use of lighting or colour or composition. In Rigoletto, there's a quartet. Four characters are singing in different speeds, different tempos, different words. And the challenge for me, as the only animator on the film, was to find the distinct ways of moving. If I didn't concentrate, they would all end up doing the same <laughs> movement. So you have to find visual shorthand, visual characteristics for each of the characters that makes them distinct. But it is making each character absolutely believable and behaving in the way that character would. And that takes a lot of concentration, as it does on stage. You want to know who you're looking at. I like restraining myself um, in terms of visual language. It forces you to be creative. It forces you to, be, to use metaphors and the like. And with Achilles, I thought, OK, I'm only going to use shields and spears, which are appropriate to the story, to tell the story. And once I'd found that visual language, the film just fell out of me. When you tell a story, you need to be aware of the duality. And I think that's what puppets do so well. By making them like Greek statues, I'm using the tropes of Greek art, the conventions of Greek art, to tell a very human story and the distance still made it intimate and sensual and in a comfortable way. Puppets to me are an external device that allows me to talk about things unhindered. And with a puppet, all you've got is a bit of wood, a bit of latex, silicon, plasticine. There's nothing there. We have to create the illusion of thought, of weight, of breathing, and sometimes it's a little unexpected details. In most magic tricks, there's a moment of um, distraction. We have a, a lovely lady who does something at the right time, so the audience look at the lady and the man fiddles with the top hat or something. He releases the rabbit and in animation, that moment of distraction happens between the frames.